Hi everybody, welcome to today's video and today I'm going to be doing a review and overview of the TDR VMI 2550i. This is a high-end CD cleaner. So yeah, we're going to give you a, a bit of an overview of the system. Uh, we're going to see it in action and give you some of my thoughts and opinions on the machine. First things first, this is not just for your everyday uh, person who has one or two discs that they need cleaning occasionally, be it a CD or a game. For the purpose of this video, probably going to refer to them as games from now on, because uh, that's what I use this for. I use it for cleaning all my games for my, uh, my eBay gaming business. Uh, if you've got one or two things to clean, do not buy one of these. It's, uh, it's quite an extravagant purchase. At the moment, uh, well, I bought this about three or four months ago, and this was £600 plus VAT, so this cost me around £720. If you've got one or two discs that need cleaning, you can take them to places such as Blockbuster or GameStation. Generally, they'll charge you around £3 per disc. Um, they don't necessarily use this machine. They can often use similar machines like the Buffing Machine or the, uh, the Disc Go Devil. Um, again, they're all by the same company, TDR. I'll pop a link to their website below. And um, yeah, so this is for somebody who's cleaning quite a lot of discs. Um, they say this can clean up to 50 a day. Uh, I have cleaned more, it doesn't seem to cut off or anything like that if you're using cleaning any more than that. Um, it has two settings, one minute and a two minute setting, and it also has a cleaning setting for actually cleaning the machine. But uh, yeah, let's have a bit of a look at it. So what you get with this machine is when this comes in the post, you'll get the big box that it all came in. Uh, it's important that you keep that because should you need to send it back for um, it being faulty or for refurbishment, you do need the original packaging, otherwise for some reason TDR decide to charge you. You'll also get a cleaning wheel, this is for cleaning the, the machine. Inside the machine, there will actually already be a buffing wheel installed. You also get one bottle of the, the cleaning fluid. This is meant to clean up to 250 discs, um, or 250 minutes worth of cleaning. Um, this is still my first bottle. Um, I've cleaned around, well I've used the machine for nearly six, 700 minutes now. Um, and I'm still on my first bottle, so it just goes to show you, you haven't got to be too stingy with this stuff, you, you can really make it last. You get a, a power cable, you get some instructions, which we don't really need, because, yeah, okay. And this is the, the bit that annoys me the most about the TDR machine. Um, this is the, a chip which goes in the back, um, it plugs into the back of the machine, and this is what counts how many minutes worth of use you've used. So, uh, you get 500 minutes per chip. I believe these are region locked somehow, so this will only work on a UK machine if you order this machine for the States. This chip will not work on yours, I presume that's what this coloured stick is for, I presume they, they change the colour perhaps per region. Uh, I have opened one of these up before and had a quick look and there doesn't seem to be any easy way to reset it, which is really frustrating because, like I said, I've still got plenty of fluid left, I've still got a decent buffing wheel upstairs, this is my, uh, this is my new buffing wheel. But, you know, say you, you have still got um, consumables left. If your chips run out, you do have to order more consumables because you can't order this separately, which is really frustrating. If you order a new set of consumables, you do get a new buffing wheel. You get a new chip with 500 minutes preloaded. And you also get two bottles of the fluid. At present, you can only buy these from TDR. Uh, potentially, there will be some surface from time to time on eBay. But uh, it is mainly just TDR who you can buy them from. Looking at the machine, it does look like a machine only a mother could love. It's not particularly attractive, but it does suit a purpose. It's really, really easy to use. Um, you've got three buttons on the front. Simple, just open and close, it's just hinged. Here's a little uh, a switch here which tells the machine whether the door is open or closed. This is a, a very heavy machine, just to point out. It's, uh, it's not something you want to be picking up and carrying around a lot. It has also got suction feet. Um, so I'm going to probably cut in a second because it's going to look really awkward me trying to lift this up. This is the, the side of the machine. We're going to be taking this off in a minute. These are just simple, uh, these just literally unscrew, they're spring loaded. So when they, uh, they're sort of locked, so once you've unscrewed it fully, you can't take it out and, and lose it. It will stay there. So we'll do that in a second. So a quick look at the back of the machine. So here's the back of the machine. Again, really simple. Here's where we put our, uh, our chip for the cleaner. So we're just going to pop that on. That's in. Here's where you put your power supply, you've got your on off switch, and here you've got a ventilation uh, port at the back. This just pulls off, so when you need to clean it, you can take this bit of foam out, give that a bit of a hoover, uh, clean this part and clean this. We'll get to cleaning later, but it can be a little bit frustrating. So, back to this side of the system, I've just unscrewed these two parts, so we're just literally just going to lift this part off. This is just the whole front 
double, we're going to put that on the side. You will need to do this once you first get the machine. Um, the machine actually comes with uh, some little bits of padding foam and things like that in it, you know, sort of around here uh, and here. And you do have to take the, the actual lid off to get all that foam out before you use the machine for the first time. So inside we've got a couple of different motors and bits. Um, the only bit really worth pointing out inside is this section here. It's literally pulled off and it can get quite dirty. I have actually just cleaned this, uh, but it'll, it is, you know, it's pretty dirty already. Um, this is just to protect the buffing wheel. The buffing wheel, there's a screw on the front, you literally unscrew that, you can take off and replace the buffing wheel. The machine, it has to be cleaned every, uh, every 20 minutes worth of use. To clean it, you get this buffing wheel, you pop this just here, and it skims a layer off this pad. What it does do is it makes the machine very, very dirty. It gets so much uh, fluff and just dirt and, and things in it. It is really important to keep your machine clean. So every 20 minutes you have to use this and then every three times I've done that set for every hour of cleaning I will take off the side of the machine and I'll give it a bit of a hoover. I'll get all the excess fluff and dust off, um, really try and clean it. Like I said, I, I take this section off here, this ventilation shaft, I give that a good clean uh, and the machine does get really dirty really quick. You'll get fluff from this for perhaps the first three cleans after you have used the actual cleaning wheel. And from then on, each time you use it, you will get little bits of fluff and um, like a powdery sort of dust on the machine. What that's from is it's from the cleaning fluid. You pop this onto every single disc you clean, and they recommend you only use this and not anything else, but you, you sort of have to use this. And it does cause like quite a powdery uh, sort of film to coat the machine. So that's what I least like about the machine. Okay, so we're just going to turn the machine on. You flip the power switch at the back, we get a nice. Uh, Color, blue colour screen on the front here. So you hear the machine start, and this is the screen that we, we get basically. We get, uh, tells us here how many uh, cleans we have left at the minute. So at present, I've got 386 cleans. One thing that's very frustrating about the, the clean count is every time you actually clean the machine, it does go down. Uh, a clean will take one minute to do, uh, which is quite frustrating because um, you are you're effectively losing a minute's worth of cleaning each time. But what else can you do? So here we've got these two buttons here, well three buttons basically, um, for some reason on mine this one on the left doesn't light up, I don't know if it's meant to or not, but whatever. So right, so here we're on regular cycle which will be green on here, if we press it right to the cross we've got a deep clean, now a regular, regular clean takes one minute, a deep clean will take two minutes, and if you press it across here you go to a, a cleaner mode, it tends to flash and it will go red um, sometimes as well. The machine when it needs cleaning every 20 minutes it will automatically go to cleaner on here and this will flash red so it will automatically tell you when it needs cleaning and that's your indication that you need to use this cleaning wheel. What we're going to do next is, uh, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this but I've got a couple of games here, I'm just going to grab this one. This one is really really scratched, this is Sims 2 for the PC. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this in the, in the video but I've got some pictures I'm going to put up as well and I'll pop a link to those online as well. So it's got lots of scuffs and lots of scrapes so what we're going to do Grab the cleaning fluid, give it a good shake, and I just literally coat the hell out of the disc. I do it in like a circular sort of motion, just pop it all on. The disc cleaner will not clean the central spindle. It will not clean uh, this part here. So try and avoid getting it on, but if you get anything on it, we'll just wipe it off afterwards. Put that on the side. So plenty on the disc. Like I said, I've, I've used this one bottle for so many cleans now, you really haven't got to be stingy with it, just don't go well over the top obviously. So this is a really battered disc, so what I'm going to do is, at the minute it's on cleaner, so I'm going to press across here, we're on regular, deep clean, we're going to put it on for a two minute clean, um, I'll cut the video, but I'll leave it on for a few seconds so you can see quite how loud the machine is, it is a fairly reasonably loud machine. Um, it's not as loud as it could be, I'm still trying to talk fairly normally, but um, yeah, quite quite a loud machine. Here again it tells you the, the clean that we're doing, so we're doing a deep clean, and up here it's telling us how uh, how long it's got left. So I'm going to cut the video and we'll, uh, we'll pick it up in a minute. Okay, we're just coming up to the end of the cleaning cycle now. I, what I forgot to mention was if you, if you lift this door open whilst it's being cleaned, it will automatically cut off, it is a safety feature. Um, like I say, it's got a little trigger here which knows when the door's open and closed, so it will, uh, it will close and uh, shut off the cleaning cycle once it has, uh, once the door has been opened. So, complete remove disc. So, we open this. 
again, this little clip, this is the, the sensor just here, so if I press this now, it'll think that the door's closed, but we don't want to be mucking about with that. So again, I'm going to pop some photos up. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. This looks a lot better. There's still a few minor speckles on it, but this disc has just come out of the machine, and it looks to me, you know, a lot better than it did before. Um, I probably wouldn't clean this disc again, but some discs are particularly bad and they will often need cleaning a few times. That's one of the frustrating things with the machine. Um, particularly things like PlayStation discs, which are black, black bases, can often look a little bit cloudy um, and they can still look a bit scuffed afterwards. But I do test everything and they do tend to still work. Sometimes they clean up perfectly, but if it's a really mashed up disc, they can, uh, they can need cleaning a few times. So this one's not looking too bad at the minute, but what I do with every disc is once I've uh, cleaned it, I just use something like this. This is a, a screen cleaner. This is literally just from the pound shop. Uh, I just spray a light mist onto the disc, and then I just use a glasses, uh, glasses cloth just to wipe any excess dust or powder or um, cleaning fluid off the disc. Sometimes it's worse than others, particularly after a clean, you can sometimes get fluff from the, the buffing wheel uh, on the disc. But uh, yeah, I mean, to me that disc is looking so much better than it did before. Um, so I might have just give us, I can still see the light scuff here, but uh, I might give it a, another clean, but I'll pop photos up before I do just to show you the difference between how this looks now compared to how it did before. Just whilst we've got this open, the way the, the way the machine works is what it does is this section here, this will, uh, this will spin round once the, the disc is on and this will actually buff away a thin layer of the disc. It actually skims off a very thin layer at the bottom of the disc. For anybody who doesn't know, this is the, the data section of the disc, but this top layer is just plastic, so we can skim this away as much as we want. This top layer, where the, the design and the, the logo and the brand and things are, this is where the data is actually stored, on the underside of this. So if I was to scratch off this top layer, it would render the disc useless. So it doesn't actually damage the disc by, uh, by skimming off a thin layer of this. I suppose if you, if you did it enough times and you know buffed the disc away to nothing, then it would, but uh, we're not going to do that. But yeah, so what, the, what this will do, you have to put the disc face up on here. So any standard DVD, CD size will work on here. It can also clean GameCube games, but you do need uh, an, uh, an adapter. So for a 3-inch disc, there's a section on here that says uh, adapter required. It's just like a little tray that sits here and you can pop the GameCube discs in. So once this starts to spin, what this will do is this moves from side to side to clean the, to clean the disc. So uh, they don't really recommend doing it, but I'm just going to quickly quickly show you what it will do, um, just so you can see what the machine will actually be doing inside. So this will start to spin, and this will move from side to side, and as you can see this starts to move down. And there I just did the emergency stop. All you have to do is press this. I did that so this wasn't, you know, buffing this away. But yeah, at any point join the clean, if you need to stop it for whatever reason, you just press this button here and that stops the machine. I'm really happy with the machine, I think it does a cracking job, um, it works really well. Um, some discs, like I say, may need several cleans. Uh, it won't necessarily clean every disc on one uh, on a, a quick one minute cycle. Some discs will need a two minute cycle. Some discs, if they're really, really bad, they'll need you know two or three two minute cycles. Uh, it costs 11 pence per minute to clean a disc because the, the cost of the consumables. I think it works out as uh, they're around £54 plus VAT. And what you'll get with that is you'll get a new buffing wheel and two new bottles of the fluid. Um, so it's meant to work out as around 11 pence per minute to clean a disc. Um, so like I say, some discs, if it needs a two minute clean, that's going to cost me 22 pence. If it needs three two minute cleans, it's going to be, you know, 66p. Uh, which isn't really too bad considering I have, you know, hundreds of discs that need cleaning for the business. Like I say, if you're a small business or something like that, or if you have hundreds and hundreds of discs, it may well be worthwhile. If you've got a couple of discs, um, like I say, I'd take them to a store and get them cleaned for two, three pounds each, something along those lines. So my biggest gripes from the machine are, one, that the chip in the back, it really does frustrate me that you have to buy a whole new set of consumables, and uh, also that the count does go down when you do a clean. Um, it can be a little slow sometimes, I say it takes a one minute clean or a two minute clean, or the higher end machines by the same company, uh, they'll do a 30 second or a, a one minute clean, but for me, that's not really too much of an issue. Uh, again, it says it can clean up to 50 discs, uh, up to 50 discs a day. Uh, personally, I have cleaned a few more, but I mean to be fair, if you're cleaning 50 discs and they're all taking a minute or two minutes each, you're not really going to want to do more than 50 a day because it, it does get a bit uh, monotonous. But I mean, for me, this is uh, it's a brilliant machine. It's 
virtually paid for itself now in the stuff that I can now sell that works that didn't work before so uh, I really would recommend it. Again at the bottom of this video in the description I'm going to pop a link to um, where some pictures are going to kept. I'm going to take some photos of the machine and some photos of the disc before and after. Um, so yeah I hope this helps you guys. If you've got any questions about the machine please you know ask and I'll try and help. Uh, I'm not endorsed by TDR or anything like that. It'd be nice if they did sponsor me and give me the bloody machine but uh, no 720 notes instead. But uh, yeah, cheers for watching guys and uh, yeah, be back with another video soon.